Today on Cruise Man's Garage, we're installing this Rivco hidden trailer hitch onto a 2018 Honda Goldwing Tour. For maximum strength and safety, the Rivco hitch has been engineered to mount directly to the motorcycle frame, not the weaker subframe like some other trailer hitches. Here are the tools required to install the trailer hitch. Also, don't forget to click that subscribe button and that little notification bell. We recommend closely following the written instructions that came with your trailer hitch. Using a 5mm Allen wrench, remove the two 5mm Allen bolts that hold the rear fender in place. Then. Pull firmly from the bottom to release the pin from the grommet and then pull towards you and the other pins will release. Now disconnect the electrical connector for the license plate light. Remove the left and right side covers by opening the saddlebags and then pulling firmly on the covers to release the three pins that fit into the three rubber grommets on the frame. The passenger floorboard covers are held in place with two plastic rivets a 10 mm bolt, and a 4 mm Allen screw. Using a pointed object, push in on the center of the plastic rivets to release them. You can use your fingernail to pull them from the openings. Here you can see the plastic rivet after it's removed. To reset the rivet for reinstallation, simply push the pin up from the bottom. On the left side of the motorcycle, it's easier to access the 10 mm bolt if you release the fuse holder from the retainer. Now remove the bolt and then remove the 4 mm Allen screw. With the floorboard lowered, you can now remove the plastic cover. Repeat the same process on the right side of the motorcycle. Underneath the right side cover, toward the front of the saddlebag, you'll find the connector for the heated seat. You can release this connector and then disconnect it by pushing the tab at the top. There are two 6 mm Allen bolts that hold the seat into place toward the front of the seat, one on each side. You can remove these using an Allen wrench, and it's a good idea to use a magnet as shown to pull the bolt and the washer out from the bike. To remove the seat, begin by pulling up firmly on the front of the seat to release the two nylon pins that fit into grommets. Make sure to hold the front of the seat up and away from the shelter as you remove the seat. Now the seat uh, slides forward to be removed, but you have to first get it loose as I'm doing here, making sure to hold that front end up so those pins don't hit the shelter. And you can get it out enough so that you can reach under there and release that electrical plug, and then you can remove the seat as shown. Remove the plastic pins from the underside of the rear tip-over bar covers, as I'm doing here. With the pin removed, you can then remove the tip-over bar covers. After removing both covers, you can remove the 6 mm Allen screws that hold the exhaust shields in place. Remove the exhaust shields by sliding them forward. They're held in place with some rubber tabs that fit into slots on the exhaust shield. And then carefully uh, pull it over the tip over bars as you can see here. Now we need to remove the two 12 millimeter bolts that hold the tip over bars in place. You should remove the tip over bars on both sides of the motorcycle before going to the next step. Use a 12 millimeter socket to loosen the muffler clamp bolt on the front of the muffler. As shown, you don't need to remove the bolt, but it does need to be loose. Locate the 12 millimeter hanger bolt for the muffler between the saddlebag and the top of the muffler. And using a 12 millimeter socket, you can remove this bolt. Now you can begin wiggling the muffler kind of side to side, twisting it a little bit to get it to release uh, from the front of the pipe. Locate the two 12 millimeter bolts and nuts that hold 
the black subframe to the silver frame. Remove these bolts using a hemostat or a pencil magnet to hold the nut so that it doesn't fall down into the shelter. Slide the vertical struts between the saddle bag and the rear fender as shown. There is enough space for these to fit and it may help to use masking tape to hold the bottom of the strut into place as shown so that you can position the top hole with the frame. Once you've aligned the hole in the strut up to the frame, use one of the 8 by 50 millimeter bolts, one of the longer bolts provided, to go through the frame with the nut that we removed earlier and tighten it. Notice how the wire harness goes between the strut and the frame. When installing the strut on the left side, make sure that the wires for the white and brown connectors shown here go underneath the strut as shown, while this wire harness should be between the strut and the subframe. On the tip over bars we removed earlier, there's a small nut welded to the mounting surface and we must remove that nut. Now you can use a bench grinder or an angle grinder or a cutting wheel, but we want that mounting surface perfectly flat and once you've ground off that nut and got the surface flat it's a good idea to hit it with a little bit of flat black paint just to protect the metal. On the right side of the motorcycle locate the 12 millimeter bolt that holds the subframe to the frame underneath the right saddlebag. Using a 12 millimeter socket remove this bolt. There is a nut welded to the back of the subframe so when you remove the bolt you don't have to worry about the nut falling off. Um, we're simply going to replace that bolt with the 8 by 45 millimeter, which is the medium size bolt that's provided in the kit. We're going to insert that and tighten it down to the specs uh, that you see in the instructions. Locate the thin spacer that came in your kit and slip it over the bolt we just installed on the right hand side of the motorcycle. Now you're ready to position the right side trailing arm on top of that spacer uh, on the bolt we just installed. You're using the rear hole of the trailing arm and then use one of the nuts provided uh, to start on the back of that bolt. You don't need to tighten it right now, just get it started. Now we're ready to reinstall our tip over bars on the right side. You'll notice that the uh, rear tab goes underneath the frame while the right tab goes on top of the frame as shown. Install the factory 8 by 25 millimeter bolt in the front to hold the tip over bar in place and then install one of the 8 by 40 millimeter supplied bolts in your kit and one of the flange nuts behind. Now you'll notice that the uh, trailing arm is behind the tip over bar. So you have the frame, the tip over bar, and then the trailing arm in the very uh, last in the sequence and you'll insert that bolt through there, put one of the nuts on and then tighten it loosely. On the left side of the motorcycle we're going to use one of the longer 50 millimeter bolts to replace that subframe bolt we removed. Uh, here I show it's already removed and been replaced with the 50 millimeter and then we're going to use the large spacer, the thicker of the two spacers, to slip over that bolt. Now we can position the left trailing arm over that spacer and install uh, one of the flange nuts as shown and just loosely tightened. And then of course the tip over bars go on next just like we did on the other side. And here you can see the two nuts installed uh, on the left side of the motorcycle. Now we're ready to install the hitch frame receiver. And this will be installed using four of the 3 8 inch bolts, the 3 8 inch nuts, and all eight of the washers provided. It's important that the trailing arm mounts on the outside of the vertical struts we installed earlier. You can see me moving the trailing arm here. Notice the washers used underneath the bolt head and underneath the nuts. I'm using a 9 16 inch wrench and a crescent wrench to loosely tighten these four bolts and nuts. Now we're ready to tighten the 12 millimeter nuts and bolts underneath the seat that hold the struts to the frame. Next, tighten the nuts and bolts that hold the trailing arms to the frame. 
After you tighten the nuts and bolts on the right hand side of the trailing arms, double check just to make sure that no threads extend more than maybe one or two threads beyond the nut. You don't want to take a chance of any threads hitting that swing arm. If they are extending too far, you may have used the incorrect bolt. Check the instructions for more information. Now you can firmly tighten the nuts that hold the hitch frame receiver in place. Now we're ready to install the wiring subharness. Locate the two rear light connectors underneath the seat. To release the connector from the retainer, press your finger on the underside of the there's a little tab, press it and pull forward and the connector will release from the retainer as shown. Disconnect the connector by pressing the other tab on the other side and pulling firmly and the connector will come apart. Make a note on the subharness that the right side has the isolator connector with the green, blue, and yellow wires. It's very important. Now here you can see how I've installed the subharness in place. Uh, there is the connector going down to the lights. There's my subharness, and I've tucked the other connector of the subharness down kind of in between the frame and the fender. And then on the left side of the bike, uh, there's the other subharness connected to the uh, motorcycle lights, uh, as you can see there. And just follow the instructions that you got with the subharness, and you should be good to go. With the subharness installed, you can now install the isolator for your particular installation. I'm using the universal trailer isolator on my Goldwing. Now here I'm trying to get this bundle of wires down to the trailer hitch area. What I've done is I've used a three foot long cable tie and I've fished it down between the saddlebag and the fender, kind of like how we mounted the strut. And I'm going to tape these wires to the end of that fishing line and then pull it from behind and pull it down through that opening. Here I've just used some masking tape to attach it to my fishing line and I'm going to push it down as far as I can and then I'll pull it from behind. And here you can see I've got the wires down through the opening between the saddlebag and the fender on the right side of the bike. It's really tucked well out of the way now. I don't have to worry about hitting the tire or anything. I left this zip tie, I haven't trimmed it off yet because I want you to see kind of where I did. There's a little piece of subframe, a round subframe. And I was able to get a zip tie back there, and it goes up, uh, and I'll show you where it comes out underneath the seat. And you can see my harness here. It's got this little these little ribs on it. It's a little wire protector. And you can see I've run it underneath these connectors here, underneath this frame piece, this cross member, underneath this harness. So it's almost, you almost can't even see it. It's underneath the light connectors. And then it just kind of goes back and down back there. Here you can see my completed installation. I've mounted the controller on the right side behind the gas tank. There's a small piece of plastic. Uh, I'm using a dual lock fastener from 3M. You can see it there, kind of attached to that piece of plastic. I used one of the butt connectors to connect the red positive wire to the fuse holder and then connected that to the positive uh, terminal on the battery. Now the black ground wire is attached to one of the bolts on the frame. Here you can see how I routed the sub-harness connector underneath these uh, two connectors on the right side and underneath that cross member on the frame. Reinstall the mufflers by kind of wiggling them from side to side, rocking them back and forth, and they'll slip back over uh, where the clamp is located. And you want to make sure to install the hanger bolt first and tighten it uh, before you tighten the clamp bolt. Now you can slip the chrome exhaust covers back into place, making sure all four tabs are in the uh, provided slots, and then slide it backward. And then once you do that, you can reinstall the six millimeter screw that holds it in place. Reinstall the passenger foot rest guards. Don't forget to put the fuses back in the fuse holder.
back of the seat underneath, you'll notice these two nylon hooks. Now those hooks slip over these posts on the passenger grab rails. Towards the front of the seat, you'll notice a nylon tongue that will fit down into a slot toward the front of the shelter. At the very front of the seat are the two nylon pins that fit down into those two rubber grommets that we removed initially. The two rubber isolators at the very back of the seat sit on top of the flat frame rails. I use a little silicone grease on these rubber parts because it helps it slide a little bit easier when we reinstall the seat. With the seat in place, route the heated seat connector under the frame rail so that we can reconnect it later. With the nylon hooks in position over the pins and the grab rails, you can now begin pushing the seat back. Make sure the nylon tongue goes into the opening on the shelter and then you can push the nylon pins down into place. Reinstall the two 6mm Allen bolts to hold the seat in place. Don't forget to reconnect your heated seat connector. If you enjoyed this video, please don't forget to give it a thumbs up.